Hello sir lads, I do hope you're well, it's Viking Gaze here, it's been a little while since I did a TikTok video, basically I have a TikTok. A lot of the time I post video clips over there and sometimes I post video clips uh, before the video's even gone out, so... Ooh, what you, what you I want to go through some of the comments, uh, respond to them, I find it so much easier to respond to it vocally, so... Let's do it. It's their destiny, I'm just helping them to fulfil it. How is it their destiny? You could say, oh, well, what in the wild animals would be killed? Well, not necessarily all of them. Some of them die from old age or disease. And it's certainly not the destiny of a pig to be selectively bred and forcibly bred into existence, to be confined, exploited, and killed by human beings. Like, according to who? I don't know if you're trying to be witty, but you're not helping them at all. <laughs> this this person say electronic devices you use for entertainment are more important than the lives of animals. So they're seeing these things that don't actually have to come at the cost of an animal's life. And they're looking at them and going, oh, well, because somebody uses this thing uh, that may contain animal products, because in some cases, I believe that some phones do, but people constantly cite you know, computer LCD screens as something that contains animal products because they get confused with the term cholesterolic and it just spread like wildfire that that is cholesterol it's got nothing to do with it it's a chemical compound but there's a difference between having a phone because you need it for work or you need it for your day-to-day -day life versus having a burger that's either made from the corpse of an animal or plants you can buy a phone secondhand and i do i mean like my, my my phone's very secondhand. Look at that. I refuse to get another one. And we need to start with the root of the problem, which is the body and the secretions of these animals that are being made into an industry. These byproducts that are put into like wraps, you know, the hair and feathers of animals, which is lecithine. You've got the oil that's put into some cereals as like vitamin D. These are all just put into things because there is a surplus of these items because we slaughter so many animals. If we weren't killing all of these animals for their flesh and their secretions, then we wouldn't have all of this product available, so we would have to use alternatives. It amazes me how people want to say we're so advanced, we're so brilliant, you know, we, we so intelligent, but it perplexes people that we couldn't come up with alternatives for these things. We often do anyway. A lot of, you know, in the case of lecithine, which is a binding agent to keep wraps wrappy. <laughs> There are other binding agents that we can use that are plant-based. This just demonstrates to me that you haven't thought thoroughly about it in like logistically speaking as to how we move forward in order to get exploitation of animals and oust it from our society. But I don't think you care. Because I offer for a debate and they were like, no, nah, don't debate hypocrites. And all they had to say was, nah, vegans are hypocrites, hypocrites. Obviously there may be confounding factors as to why this person won't debate, but typically I put the offer out and so far still nobody from TikTok has, and there are adults on there, there are dairy farmers on there, there are farmers on there who, you know, you know, run their mouth constantly, but they don't want to actually have a voice discussion, and they just come up with excuses as to why they don't want to do it. It's very interesting. And yeah, exactly. Oh, well, I would, I would say what Andrea said that that is a two quote quote fallacy. You know, they're not bringing an argument against. They're going, well, what about? <laughs> what about? But to answer your question, I believe I've got rid of every single animal product that I have. It is a process where you're like, oh my god, I didn't consider that that may have an animal product on it. This person, yeah, another one talking uh, mad crap, forgetting that we have to feed 70 billion land animals crops as well. I don't know why people can't compute that obviously we would use more resources the higher up the trophic pyramid that we're going. You know, if we have these tens of billions of land animals to feed, of course they're going to require more resources <laughs> versus if we just ate plants directly. That is my belief, yes. I'm okay with it and I'm okay with your view on it. Telling me I'm wrong is subjective and not okay. <laughs> It's amazing, it's amazing. Now, it's for context, now what I'm looking at is a clip where I was talking to someone and I was saying, you do realize that if you say that you're not gonna give up, like knowing what happens to these animals, and then you say, well, I really like the taste though, what you're saying is that you believe a momentary sensory pleasure being satisfied is more invaluable than the entire life of another sentient being. So this person has then said, yeah, it's, it's my belief that um, my taste pleasure of being satisfied for a moment, so like five minutes, is more valuable than the <laughs> 
time. It's so unimaginably selfish, it's unreal. <laughs> but apparently me telling them that they're wrong is not okay. <laughs> unreal. It's okay to value a sensory pleasure being satisfied over the entire life of a sentient being. That's fine. But telling someone they're wrong? No, that's just not okay. Now you've crossed the line. Right, you really ought to fix your priorities, cause wow. We eat meat because that's what nature intended. Enjoyment has nothing to do with it. I said nature intends animals do a lot of abhorrent things, so they're all justified because of nature. So instead of actually answering me, they said you've been brainwashed into a poor understanding of abhorrent. Now what I understand abhorrent to mean, and it means quite a few things, but I understand it to mean that it entices feelings of disgust, of disdain, lo of, of loathing, like, and I th look at things that animals do, and because I am a moral agent, I do look at it in that regard, because it's not nice. I understand they're not moral agents, so, you know, they're not doing it in the way that we would do it in like a mal malicious way. It's when we do things that nature intended, um, there's some horrible things, but it just, it just tells me everything I need to know, really, when someone cannot directly answer a question. And yeah, they just never came back. This person's really confused. Nature also made it possible for us to s discover ways of stopping and suppressing said viruses. Science made it possible to do that. Of course, in science, you play around with what is natural, but it's not na <laughs> nature is the virus like the virus is a natural thing it'd be natural to allow people to just die of viruses like that would be the natural thing to do it's science it's modern medicine and we go against nature when we give people medicine when we give them things that can help them you know against viruses so are they just twisting <laughs> oh my gosh you're just showing me that like going against nature is sometimes a good thing so Thank you for proving my point. I just hope someone will debate me and they just won't. This was a rather embarrassing encounter, I've got to say. I ate meat because I like it. How many sperm have you killed? How would I have killed sperm? So you haven't had any intimate contact with a man? No, I'm a lesbian. You know sperm aren't sentient like animals, right? So they aren't alive. <laughs> huh. Do you know the difference between living and sentient? They didn't get back to me. Okay. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Imagine equating a non-sentient sperm to a living sentient animal. Killing dogs equals... <laughs> Oh my, it's absolutely mind boggling. The things that people will pretend they find even remotely comparable in order to attempt to justify consuming the bodies and the secretions of animals. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's like the reach you've got to go to. Oh, that's embarrassing. You should be embarrassed. Hey, uh, yeah, another people just, just won't debate me. This person just doesn't get it. Why are vegan taste pleasures more important than normal omnivores taste pleasures? Like. <laughs> oh god my pet peeve is when you make something like you, I, I hope blatantly clear like what you are saying and then someone just takes from it like completely like, <laughs> like just completely the wrong way they think i'm trying to say you should go that i what I, <laughs> what is that no it's that nobody's sensory pleasures are more important than someone else's entire existence. What does a vegan taste pleasure have to do with anything? It, it, I, I, I didn't go vegan until I was 18. There were products that I enjoyed. And then I realized, oh wait, I can just have a plant version of this and then I enjoy them. But for a moment in time, because I did it like nearly seven years ago, I had to just be like, okay, well, just kind of just got to eat plants, even though I don't really like vegetables uh, because, you know, lives are more important than my taste pleasure. So can you just read? Like, I? <laughs> I don't even know how you got there. Um, I don't know. <laughs> But I, I can't I can't help you from the place that you you've gone you've gone too far away from my my reach I'm afraid like vegans have taste versus life as well like what do you mean are they talking about crop deaths because the only way we're actually going to combat crop deaths if you even actually care about crop deaths to begin with is by making industrial change in order to consider the animals. But how are we gonna get that industry to change when it is within a society that deems it acceptable to slit the throats of animals, to bolt gun them in the head, all for you know our own use, for uh, clothing, for furniture, 
for food. We treat animals like garbage, like commodities. If we keep killing animals and then killing other animals to defend the animals that we're going to kill, and then killing animals to feed those other animals, oh golly, it's almost as if it's one, not a vegan problem, and two, would actually be helped by going vegan. So if you actually cared about this, then you would go vegan too. But something tells me you don't. Thank you ever so much for watching. TikTok is absolutely infuriating, but I do think that there is some effect that's had over that. Sometimes you get a really good discussion. It's very few and far between. Uh, a lot of it is just nonsense, <laughs> but you just gotta keep going because uh, hopefully then you could influence some change in people. Hopefully they'll stop deploying this rubbish in order to defend uh, behavior that they could just change. <laughs> hopefully, because <laughs> I'm getting tired now. Thank you so much for watching. Do drop a like if you enjoyed it. I do hope you're well. Until next time, so much. I'll see you soon.